I started my first company when I was grade four, and since then my passion for entrepreneurship has never left me. But I started to learn about how to embrace diversity, and learning to care about the people who are around me, and learning how to solve social issues in the world through entrepreneurship. So growing up as a kid, Pokemon was my favorite TV anime show. When I was grade four, I remember I would draw pictures of Pokemon. And then one day, my classmate asked, can I buy this, this picture from you? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll sell it to you for five bucks. And that inspired me. That night when I got home, I actually asked my mom to photocopy hundreds of them. And me and my little brother, who was in kindergarten, we started painting colors on it. And the next day, I sold all of them. But I got suspended from school. <laughs> As a kid growing up, I always wanted to make people happy. That's why I decided to bring firecrackers to school. And I had the firecrackers surrounded by the chairs, under the table, and when my teacher entered the room, I had light up. And then it was a huge chaos, and she would start to scream and running around, and the smoke started to like, get all around the classroom, and I was scared, but it was fun. <laughs> this is me when I was in junior high school. I wore pajamas to school, and this is in Hong Kong, though. It's a really traditional area, and I was that rebel, that fighting against the teacher. So we set up this rebellious pack of me. I started to explore entrepreneurship. I started to learn programming when I was grade four, and I started my first web design and web hosting company when I was grade six. And when I was grade 11, I started to invest in, uh, in the fashion industry in Toronto, and right now I'm running my own multi-million dollar tech startup in Toronto and New York. And I also started a charity four years ago. But people ask me, like, Desmond, why do you start companies at a young age, right? And to be honest, I just did it for fun. I just did it because I didn't make money, but I loved doing it. And until one summer, it really changed my perspective towards business. So I had this chance to go on a mission trip, a volunteer trip to Thailand. I spent two months there living with the people, understanding their culture, and trying to teach them math and English. And I realized that these people don't have the technology we have, they don't have the food we have, they don't have the resources we have. But why are they so happy? And what's so special about them, you know? It just changed my thought process. It gave me a whole brand new definition of success. And what I've got up from there is that I realized the world doesn't lack of education. We don't need more PhD in the world. We don't need more entrepreneurs, we don't need new technologies, but what we're lacking of is empathy and love. So, wearing pajamas to school is still an issue for me. That's why my parents decided it's better to send me to Canada to study. That's why I came to Canada in grade nine. Uh, this is me in a picture. It was my first winter ever in uh, Toronto. Man, it was cold. Um, and learning English was a challenge for me. I came here uh, as an ESL student, which is uh, English as a second language. But I knew that if I want to help the people in Thailand, I need to learn the language here so I can share my passion and share the vision among my friends. So in grade nine, I decided to start a school club called Take Action. What we did was you know, fundraising for big organizations. We had workshops across different school board, promoting the importance of having, uh, helping children in the developing world. Two years working on it, we had fundraised, we had sponsored like 10 different schools, we had raised thousands and thousands of dollars. But one day, my team came up to me and said, Desmond, we're quitting. And I was like, what? What happened? And then they were like, you're such a bad leader, dictator, like we're hate, hate you. <laughs> and I was like, what? You know, I raised like, tens of thousands of dollars. I was so efficient, like the best business leader possible that you can find. Why are you quitting? And that really shocked me because I was running surely wrong. I thought being an expert in business, I would do fantastically in the uh, on the nonprofit sector, but I realized that I was doing it completely, completely wrong. I was too focused on efficiency, how to optimize ways to raise funding. How can we throw money at the people and stuff? But I realized that this is not what people need. I want to share with you a story that my friend shared with me. Um, so she had worked in the nonprofit world for the last 10 years. And recently, she posted on Facebook, she said, 
Finally, I've uh, raised $2 million to build a well in the developing world. And, but what happened to it is within two weeks, it got destroyed. And she was so angry about that because she put in so much hard work into it, brought all the top engineers into the country, you know, spent millions of dollars trying to build this well. And within two weeks, it was destroyed. So she started to investigate what actually happened. And she realized it was actually one of the local women leader. She destroyed the well. And she asked her, why did you destroy it? I built this well for you guys. And she, she told her that I was taught to take water from the different valley. And picking up water from two hours away from the house is the only time we can separate with men. And now if you build the well right in front of our house, we have no excuse to get up from our house. And we cannot be our friends. And then she was like, wow, you know? And then to me, it just charged my thinking process because I was you know, taught in the Western way of economic, the Western way of success. And we forgot about, you know, we're dealing with people here. We're not trying to optimize things. We're not trying to like, you know, just care about the bottom line, how much money, how much things you can get up from there. But we're talking about impact, impacting people's lives. So from that experience, I've decided not just you know wasting money, not just you know um, throwing resources at people, but rather think from a different perspective. What do those people actually need? And this got this got me uh, inspired to start a uh, nonprofit organization. So what we do every year is we kind of we invite top young social entrepreneurs around the world, from UK, from Australia, US, and Hong Kong. And once a year, we have this gathering, sharing ideas, how can we use local solutions to solve local problems. This started four years ago, and in fact, yesterday was the fifth annual conference. Hundreds of talented young entrepreneurs who care about the issue around the world come together, share about what are we doing good in Canada, what are we doing good in Australia, and how can we apply all the strength we have to solve some of the local issue in Hong Kong. This is our team. Uh, we started this three years ago. To be honest, I'm a, a really young entrepreneur here. I made lots of mistakes, but to me, what I realized is that you don't need to care about what people think about you. You don't need to care about, you know, are you going to screw up? Because the answer is, you're always going to screw up. But screw up fast so you can learn and get better from it. Many people ask me, what do you study? And I tell them I'm in sociology, and they give me this face. It's like, oh, that's not that guy who started like 10 startups, starting charities, he's in sociology? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then we had that awkward silence for like five seconds. And I want to let you guys know, I think if we want to change the world, if we want to push the world forward, we need to acknowledge different expert expertise. Not just the engineers or doctors can save the world here, but as we can see today, you know, through poetry, through spoken word, through arts and music, I think when we unite all different experts together and we all respect each other's professional, we can actually change the world for the better way. So last year I had a chance to uh, represent Canada to attend the uh, Global Clinton Initiative University. It's so inspiring to see students across the world attending this conference. People from um, Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, all across the world come together. It's so important for us to respect different people's belief and culture and values. Sometimes in Canada, we learn to compromise and we learn to be quiet, not to comment on people's opinion because we want to be nice. But that's not the way how we push the world forward. I think conflicts, debates are good for society. And I think that. As a citizen of our society, instead of you know, just being a nice, keep our mouth shut, that's not being a good citizen. A good citizen is the one that speak up, speak for the poor, speak for the needy. Regardless of which culture, belief you have, we should acknowledge that and actually respect them. Last year, I got an uh, honor to be the president of Cairo Society. So Cairo Society is a group of over a thousand entrepreneurs who are under 25, and these people are crazy. 
And when I meet with them, I was so happy because for the first time I felt that I'm normal. <laughs> My friend in this organization, like Henry, he was working on a healthcare startup, innovating ways to help diabetes patients to keep track of their um, health issue. A friend in the organization building a Nix app to teach little kids how to program. And I have friends in the organization trying to invent a new way to generate new energy for to replace gasoline. To conclude, I think we live in a diverse society where we have different beliefs, where we have different ways of running business and charities. But at the end, I think we all have a undivided mission here. As a citizen of our society, we need to use our experience, resource, and energy to make the world a better place, not just for yourself, but for the people who are around you and for the next generation. Thank you.